I'd like to welcome uh, Tracy Swinburne, the head teacher of Jerry Clay Academy in Wakefield. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you. Welcome to Early Essence. It's really good to have you here today Thank to talk you. about your school and the wonderful things that you're doing. Thank you. So I'm going to ask you a few questions and get you talking about the things that matter to you mm -hmm. um, so that we can explore the huge differences that you're making to the outcomes for your children in mm -hmm. your community. So first of all, um, would you mind telling me how long you've been the head teacher at Jerry Clay? Yes, absolutely. So I'm now in my fourth year. So approximately three and a half years that I've been at Jerry Clay Academy. Okay, and you look like you've loved every minute of it. So oh, I absolutely love Jerry Clay Academy. Yeah. It's just been absolutely wonderful to to go on the adventure that we've been on, yeah. and to actually really celebrate childhood and I feel that the school is absolutely moving in that direction mm -hmm. in which we can really kind of go on a journey with our children and really celebrate their uniqueness. Yeah. I love it. When you first arrived at Jerry Clay, what, what were your priorities? What were the things that you saw that you wanted to really make a big difference in? Mm. So as soon as I arrived at Jerry Clay, um, it was a school that was performing okay. Um, but had lots of potential to really improve the outcomes for children, not only academically, but pastorally, and actually to look at um, how we really embrace childhood, yes, to raise outcomes, but ultimately, how do we enable children to enjoy the here and now? And at our school, we think that it's really valuable to actually celebrate every single year group and that every child should come to school every day and should actually be embraced with fantastic first-hand experiences so that ultimately they can improve outcomes because it's real life to them. Yeah, great. Mm. So one of the reasons that we're talking today is because in um, summer 2017, Ofsted came to visit you. They mm. didn't visit to inspect your school, but mm. um, they came as part of their bold beginnings survey. Mm. So as you know, they were looking in great detail at your reception year to find out how you manage to ensure that all your children achieve great outcomes by the end of that year, but also recognising that they sustain that. So you were one of 40 schools that, that were really looked at, mm -hmm. and um, I think what we'd like to know really is what you believe is the reason for the accelerated progress that children um, are making at Jerry Clay. Mm. We are passionate um, about early years pedagogy, and we believe that um, children should be taught um, developmentally appropriate, not only for their age, but the stage of learning. Um, a key for that improvement was actually looking at the learning environment ultimately, um, and ensuring that, that that was the third teacher, because actually if we get that environment right, children will absolutely thrive. So we decluttered the environment, there was lots and lots of choice, but too much choice, which was overbearing and wasn't reactive to the children's interests or for their stages of development. So we changed that completely. We neutralised the environment because at our school we believe that well-being is absolutely key. Mm -hmm. Those characteristics of learning, we feel, should permeate from reception all the way through to year six. So we neutralised that environment because we wanted the children's work to shine out. We wanted their interests to be absolutely paramount and that for those children that were new to a setting, we wanted them to feel a sense of belonging mm. as soon as they arrived in the setting. So we neutralised the environment, we uncluttered it and we really trained the staff to actually embrace the environment because ultimately they are part of the environment. They're the key, aren't they? Absolutely. Um, to make that absolutely work. And for the staff within the setting to really understand child development and that yes, you know, in our context, we have children coming from many different backgrounds and our environment needed to embrace that. But ultimately, it needs to embrace the community that we live in so that as soon as a child walks into the setting, they feel that we're celebrating the community that we have. As well as that, you know, we're really, really focused on um, achieving those outcomes, but through a balance, um, through a balance of child initiated and adult initiated activities. We do believe that the adult is powerful in that and that gives the children a voice, gives the children the language, um, enables the children to, to actually go on their journey. We need to look at that quality of adult interaction mm -hmm. because without quality adult interaction, those, um, those outcomes cannot be achieved. We truly believe that. Mm -hmm. But equally, we believe it's a journey that should be continued all the way through into year one, all the way through up to year six. And that yeah. was key for us. Yeah in achieving that. So it was balance, it was environment, and it was quality adult interaction. 
So I'm interested to know, Tracy, really, your thoughts around the recommendations for reception in bold beginnings, because I think many people would believe that the schools that Ofsted went to look at have quite a formal, um, very adult-directed curriculum, and I think that has been a big concern. But from what you're saying, that's not really how you achieve what you achieve. Absolutely not. Um, and I think, um, just going back to the first question, it's very much about the balance. Mm. And it's about ensuring that, yes, we have quality adult interaction, but equally we allow our children space and time to actually consolidate those skills, but take them on another level as well, and actually allow our adults to follow them on that journey. So, yes, we do have um, quality adult interaction, and yes, we do have adult-initiated times, but equally, we do allow our child that, children that freedom to actually explore to develop their interests and to follow them on their own projects, but equally be able to apply those skills that we've given them, the voice that we've given them, the language that we've given them, and be able to actually extend on that. And mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. the wonderful thing about childhood is that children have such a powerful voice. Mm -hmm. And actually, if we didn't allow them that freedom and that time, then how on earth do we ever know what they're capable of? Yeah. But equally, as adults, we have skills that we can impart and we can give to our children and they can take it on to the next step. And I think that's the exciting thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that hopefully uh, we can dispel the myth that actually by, by teaching formally, you get the standards. Well, no, because at our school, we teach with balance and mm -hmm. we teach with balance all the way through our school, all the way up to year six to enable our children to have a voice, but equally for us to impart that knowledge, for us to teach. But teaching is not only adult instru instruction, direct instruction, but also mm -hmm. through play. Mm -hmm. And that's absolutely key. So in the Bold Beginnings report, although outdoor play is mentioned in the body of the report, it isn't actually really a big focus and certainly doesn't come across in any of the findings or recommendations. So. I know that outdoor play is a big focus in your school, not only in early years, but all the way through. Mm. Can you tell me about what you think that achieves for your children? Absolutely. Outdoor play um, for us um, is absolutely pivotal to our children's learning, not only academically, but actually mentally and socially, um, so that our children have the ability to be able to express themselves in an environment that they're comfortable with. So we don't actually differentiate between the outdoors and the indoors at our school, all the way from reception to year six. We allow our children to learn through a range of subjects um, all the way up to year six. And we feel that this actually empowers our children um, to be able to learn, to deepen their understanding of the world around them, but ultimately to give them that sense of that pastoral development, those characteristics to learning we're passionate about, which obviously permeate successful foundation stages. Yeah. However, those characteristics to learning, we believe, should go all the way through from reception to year six. Mm -hmm. And actually with that embedded, it then allows our children to be braver, to take more risks, and actually believe that the sky is the limit. They can achieve anything if we don't put a cap to it. Yeah. And we don't believe in that. We believe in development, yes but we don't believe in a cap mm. to expectations for any child. Mm. The outdoors empowers, it gives freedom and it gives creativity, which we truly believe in. Yeah. And we think this empowers them to produce fantastic writing, to give them the imagination to have that freedom in all subjects. Mm. That's brilliant, thank you. And I think just one final question around um, the focus of the report, which is very much about literacy and maths. Mm. So how do you approach um, that kind of more formal aspect of teaching because I imagine that you're not afraid of that that you know that that has its place mm -hmm. and that that alongside the kind of the more um, kind of personalized work that you do and child-led work that you do and that independence that you give children mm. actually together gives you that real sense of not only pure attainment but also lifelong achievement absolutely so talk to me about the kind of the nub really of, of how you approach that real rigor with literacy and mm. maths mm. Yes, you know, we believe that reading is important. It's incredibly important because, as you said, it gives our children those life chances. And if we get that absolutely right from reception early years, then we know that we're giving our children those life chances that they absolutely deserve. So, yes, in literacy, we do teach phonics um, in small groups. And yes, we do focus on our literacy through a core text, a core text that's linked to the children's interests and that allows the children to explore um, those wonderful stories in depth and then from that, we wrap around our, our provision, our areas, which allow the children to explore um, in depth 
those stories and actually follow their own paths as well. But we believe that there is an absolute place for adult initiated teaching to enable that high quality exploration to take place. The same applies to our mathematical learning is actually teaching our quality mathematics sessions uh, based around a text, usually around a core text, linked to literacy as well, and then enabling our areas to come alive with the mathematical learning that we've been teaching. So yes, allowing that directed teaching to then really set up that quality provision that allows our children to explore the concepts which we've introduced to our children. One of the things that I do know about your school, Tracy, is that you do a lot of work with parents. Um, and that's something that I think is, is really part of your passion and kind of the heart of your school is how you work with your community. Mm. Talk to us about how you feel that really impacts on children's achievement and attainment. Mm. It's paramount. It's not only paramount from the moment that a child steps into your school, it's paramount for every single year group. To maintain that parental engagement in your school is, is so important, we believe. Um, so we do that in a, in a number of ways, uh, by inviting our parents in for workshops, by inviting them in every single week for library time, for coffee mornings, for opportunities to actually celebrate our children's learning journeys, where we have our learning journey libraries for every single year group, where parents are actually enabled to celebrate what their children are learning, both from an adult initiated point of view, but also from a child initiated point of view. How have the children followed their interests and, and what are the key things that we want to share with our parents and make sure that they understand that that is powerful learning as well. We also celebrate our community. So the context in which we, are, in which we live, we have our annual Apple Days where we actually celebrate the orchards um, of where Jerry Clay is actually situated. The children and all generations come together for us to celebrate that, to produce work, to perform, um, to perform music at those events, really is empowering. And every single term we exhibit our children's work because we believe in beautiful work. We believe in children aspiring for the very best. And we believe that if we have a beautiful environment, and beautiful exhibitions. It raises the aspirations of not only our children, our parents, but our whole community, because they feel proud, proud of the school and putting the school in the centre of where we are. It's so clear that you're doing such a fantastic job within your school. And it's clear from the passionate way in which you talk that you're a really inspirational leader. So I'm really pleased that you've been able to talk to us today, and particularly in light of the fact that you were one of the schools within the Bold Beginnings Report and that you've been able to show how balanced an approach you take and that real blend of very rigorous approach to um, adult interaction and that direct um, teaching that is really needed, but how you really value the child and the child's interests and the ability for that child to, to have that independence and to feel empowered. Mm. And I think you've spoken really well at how you bring those two things together. So mm. thank you very much.